Hi, I'm going to build a mountain lion uh, Mark II. And the first uh, thing I do is I tape the plan down. I have my glue ready to go. I have my sticky dots ready. And I have a little stick to uh, put the glue on with. And I'm going to begin by building the horizontal stabilizer. And the way you do that is you first sort of put the parts about where they're going to be. It doesn't have to be too precise. And I'm going to take a sticky dot. And every place I see one of these uh, joints, I'm going to get the parts together pretty snugly, press a sticky dot down on it, and then uh, just kind of follow the dots in numerical order. And those, uh, if you look at the plan, there's a one and a two and a three, and those aren't you know, ultra critical, but it's just a good uh, reasonable order in which to do things. So on the stabilizer, I've put together the uh, kind of the middle joints, and now I'm just going to get the, the tips again. You just kind of hold them together, put a sticky dot down, and you can press pretty pretty firmly down on those sticky dots. And uh, there, that one's ready to go. Set that aside. Next I'm going to get out some wing parts. There are uh, four parts for each wing. And you have the uh, leading edge, trailing edge, you have a root piece, and then there's this one single rib. I think the best place to begin is right there with that rib. So I'm going to get those right there. And the same, same process, you just take a sticky dot, and I'm guessing using green this time, doesn't really matter. And you get it over there, and again, you don't have to be, you know, 100% uh, exactly right up on top of the, on top of the plan. The uh, plan pretty much just shows you where the parts will go, but uh, in about 12 seconds you're going to be removing this from the plan, so there's no sense in pinning it down or anything like that. That joint's a little bit, a little bit messed up, but I'll fix that later. And uh, last piece on here is this is this root piece, and that kind of fits in. There's some notches there, and that's just for making it a stronger joint in the end. So you get that in place. And again, uh, two more sticky dots. Oops, missed it there. There's one. There's two. Actually, that's four and five, isn't it? Okay, that one's ready to go. Okay, and we're just going to set those aside. We'll hit them with glue in just a minute, but first I have to get all three of the parts uh, assembled. So I'm going to do the second wing. The uh, two wings are identical. Uh, they both build uh, oriented the same way, and where they become different is when you go to cover them. That's where you'll find uh, you have to make sure you cover just one side and uh, that you're covering, covering uh, kind of opposite sides. The top of one has got to be the uh, kind of the mirror image of the other one. That'll make more sense when we get to covering. Two dots See, I'm almost done with the greens. Here's wing tip. And then over here I have the root. It's right in there. And I guess I'm into the yellow dots now. So there's one. <clears throat> there's a second yellow dot, really the fifth dot of the wing, and that one's done. Okay? Now we're ready for some glue. So the way I'm going to do this is uh, I flip the structure upside down. I'm going to take a piece of plastic and put it right here to protect the, you know, the table, whatever you're working on. Um, this will go very quickly. I'm going to start in putting a little blob of uh, what's well, tight bond, tight bond original, right there, and that's, you know, that's enough for the entire plane. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little stick here and uh, put some on the joint, joint, and you don't have to worry about getting into the joint just yet. I'll show you how we do that. So I'm just kind of put one one little blob on every joint, and I'm actually using more than you more than you need. And I kind of just smear it in, and you press right down into the joint. You want to smear this out as much as you can, and then actually force it down into the the crack. But you don't have to open up a gap to do that. Just your pressure on the joint uh, will take care of that for you. Okay, so that one's ready to go. And this, the thinner you can press it out the uh, shorter it will take to dry. Okay, back had a little interruption there, but um, ready to glue the ready to glue the stabilizer together. I've got my plastic here just to make sure I don't glue anything to the table. Um, I've got my stick, my glue, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. A little bit on that joint, I'll probably use a little more. And there, uh, right in there. You want to make sure those joints are pretty snug. Sometimes the dots um, you know, don't cling very hard. You don't want the dots to cling too hard because you're going to be peeling them off in just a little bit. Okay, I've got some, I've got uh, glue in all of the joints, and I'm just going to press down nice and nice and firmly 
All right, like that. That'll work fine. And the fourth, or I'm sorry, the uh, the other side of the stabilizer, and this uh, back half here. And again, I'm just I'm, I'm pressing down as I uh, smear the glue out, and then I'm just going to set something on top of it to make sure it doesn't um, doesn't take a you know a warp. There's a box. I can use that on the side. There's another box. I can just uh, set those like that, and that'll make sure that uh, no warps develop. The wood will absorb uh, this glue, um, but when it dries, it doesn't retain a uh, doesn't retain a warp if you play your cards right and you prop it uh, prop it up with something. All right, I have one uh, last wing to do here, so here it is, and same as before, just some glue on every joint, not too much. You know, you don't even have to take it quite out to the edge because when you smear it in, it'll certainly get there. Oops, I put a little too much on that one, but that's all right. Okay, set that down, and again, same drill. Just kind of press it in, smear it out. You want to hold both parts on the table firmly, you know, the parts that are being joined. Hold them firmly uh, down on the table. The dots are good, but uh, they can certainly let go uh, if you're not careful. So I'm going to smear that one in. And as I said before, the, the more you smear it in and uh, smear it around, the faster it will dry. Okay, that one's good. I'm going to set that right there. And uh, what can I set on? How about the bottle glue right there? And how about okay, so this little plastic deal? I'll set that right on top of there. You know, just hold everything nice and flat while I do. Okay, I'm going to cover a uh, mountain lion wing here. And what I've done first is I've laid the parts out. Uh, really, it's all uh, on the same sheet of tissue. You can do this as a, uh, you know, cut out the pieces individually first if you want, but this works uh, just fine. And uh, I'm just sort of positioning them here on the sheet so that you can see, uh, so, you know, when you're building, you can see how they're going to go. One thing to watch out for, make sure that the two wings are uh, opposite each other so that you make sure you're covering the top uh, of each wing instead of the top of one and the bottom of the other. Uh, this is the horizontal stabilizer right here. It's the biggest piece, and uh, that one long cut right along there, when we get to trimming it, that's probably the hardest cut in the, uh, in the build, but it's not too bad. Go ahead and move this aside for a minute while I get out my box. And uh, I just have this, this old box in which I, in which I do my uh, glue spraying in, and I'm just going to set the parts. You know, this is the kind of thing, you, can, you could set them all three inside here like I do, or if you're not quite certain what you're doing, you could do it uh, one part at a time. So just set them inside there. It, if you have a preferred side, if you think one side is better than the other, uh, you know, for the uh, for the top, make sure it is uh, pointing upward. So I grab my grab my trusty uh, 3M77. This one's been around a while, and I'm going to just give the entire thing a very light uh, spritz. Doesn't have to be heavy at all. And a, a new user of this stuff will sometimes put way too much on you. I, I, I probably right there put on more than is needed. Now I'm just going to take the parts one after the other and I'm going to set them right down flat onto the onto the uh, tissue. If I were a better builder I probably would have made sure the tissue is, is um, even just a little bit flatter. This isn't bad though. So I'm just going to put it there. Uh, you do want to leave a gap in between them but it doesn't have to be uh, too big. You just need to be able to fit scissors uh, in the gap. So I'm just pressing all the way around on these parts so that uh, the glue you know, sticks to the sticks to the wood all the way around. Okay, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. Next thing I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. I have two. I have uh, this one right here. I, oops, dropped a pin. I have uh, this one. It's you know standard Fiskars uh, type sewing scissors. This one's been through the wars a little bit. I'm just going to Cut the parts out uh, kind of roughly. They don't need to be trimmed just yet. I'm just going to separate them, set them aside. And uh, I, I have another pair of scissors, uh, which I really like, and it's a, it's a very long uh, pair of scissors. Here it is right here. It's this really nice long one that, that uh, makes trimming one of these uh, extremely easy. But I'll do it with the short scissors so you can see that it can be done. I'm going to tackle the hardest cut uh, first. That would be this one right here, the long straight edge on the uh, on the horizontal stabilizer. Let me get those out of the way so you can maybe see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut this long edge right here and what I do is I have the part facing upwards so the descending blade of the scissors tracks right alongside uh, the wood. 
and you get a very good cut doing this. Now, when, it, when you get into this long cut, it gets a little bit tricky, so you want to tilt the stabilizer away from the scissors, and that gives you a nice uh, exposed edge where you can get the blade all the way along. There, that's the hardest part of all the trimming. And, uh, you know, just clean the, keep the uh, scissors free of extra tissue. Now I'm just going to trim all the way around. This goes very quickly, and you don't have to spend all day doing this. Uh, this isn't the only way to trim covering. You can use the wet edge technique, which is uh, a good idea. Works fine. Maybe I'll do that on one of these others here. There, there's the stabilizer. I'm just going to go around and kind of press the covering down, make sure that it's all, you know, stuck all the way around. And I could have slowed down, maybe done a little bit better job on the, on the uh, leading edge right there. This nice curved leading edge makes it really easy to get a, a pretty good trim all the way around. You want your light uh, so that you can see any little specks of covering that aren't stuck quite so well. Well, it's good. It's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but uh, it'll certainly do the job. I'm just going to trim that one section a little bit cleaner right there. Okay, set that guy aside. Uh, why don't we try wet edge on this one? The wet edge technique is where you, don't laugh, um, what you do, I'm just going to trim that a little. I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to wet it, and I'm just going to smear that edge all the way along. And what this does is it weakens the, weakens the tissue and it enables you to just tear it away really nicely. So you can use a little thing of water if you don't like licking your fingers. I'm just pressing the edge right along here. You know, that's a little gross, but that's all right. Get it along there. Press down, make sure the, the uh, spray adhesive is working well. Okay, so I think I'm wet all the way around. And now you just come along and you tear it away. And that's, uh, you know, you can't get anything easier than that. It doesn't always produce the prettiest job, but uh, that's not always your first uh, concern. So let me just do that there. And uh, sometimes what I do is I'll take a, uh, oops, I'll take a, a small little sanding block. I'll grab one back here and I'll show you. And uh, I'll just kind of clean up the edges. See, that's kind of ragged, but uh, I'm going to take this little sanding block. I can get it. Here's a, all I have right now is a, kind of a big sanding block, so it'll, it'll have to do the, the trick. Uh, just come along here and you just very gently, very gently sand all the way around and you just kind of remove the, uh, remove the fuzz. Okay? So that one's like that. It's a, uh, you know, that one could have been a little bit prettier. Uh, here at the end, I'm going to clean up this last end right here with, uh, with the scissors. Okay? So I think I'm, I think I usually go for the scissors rather than wet edge, uh, because it's faster and, um, Usually comes out a little bit neater. I'm going to trim this last one using my using my big scissors, and you'll see how quickly this goes. It's like snip, one big long cut along here. You can see there I have a little bit of a of a uh, dot stuck to the bottom of that glue joint, and then I can make this one long uh, cut almost in one snip. But there you go. Okay, there's the uh, covering, and this, this process works for covering a mountain lion, or you can use it for covering any uh, plane. The idea of spraying and then laying the part um, upside down onto the covering that's been uh, spread flat on the table works, works like a champ. Okay, here I'm uh, ready for the final assembly. And uh, you say I have some things laid out. I have the fuselage. I have the rubber hook right there. It's not the rubber. <laughs> it's not made of rubber. It's for the rubber. Here's the rudder. Here's the stabilizer. Two wings. I guess that stabilizer will look a little better for it like that. Uh, over here, I have the wing joiner. And uh, last, I, I show my, my glue. Here's so um, I happen to be using a uh, little bit of super glue and uh, some accelerator I have handy. This, this super glue is not thin. It's actually kind of a medium. Uh, but you can get in these cheap little tubes if you want to use that. You could also be using tight bond, of course. That would be another good glue to use. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get the, uh, get the hook onto the uh, fuselage. You see the hook has a kind of a, an extension here. That's just so you can grip it. I'll bring this closer to the camera. I think you can see that. There's a, little, there's a little cross that you can see right through the oval. 
That's just so you can make sure it's in the right uh, place. So I'm going to take my glue and uh, with, with super glue, something like this, or uh, cyanoacrylate, you can just put a drop of glue right there in the uh, middle of the dot. And my glue is working a second ago. There it goes. Oops, that's a little too much. Uh, I'm going to hit it with some accelerator just to speed the process along a bit. And uh, that's good. I can set that down. Now, if you want, you could, uh, you know, of course, put a little uh, ambroid or uh, tight bond underneath there and grip it for a moment and then set it aside. That's ready to go. Next will be uh, to join the two wing panels together. So I take this joiner. And you'll see there's a little um, kind of an extension on the top, and that little tab kind of slips right into that slot in the wing, in the leading edge. And then you take the other wing and do exactly the uh, same thing. And if uh, those all line up, it sort of squeezes in there tight, and uh, that's, that'll be a nice joint when I put some glue on it. So here's the glue again. Uh, let's put a little glue right in there. Uh, you know, this is absolutely a case where you don't need too much glue. You know, this, this stuff is... is vastly stronger than the, uh, than the wood it's gluing, so you don't need a whole lot. Uh, you do need a little bit, if I can get to come out, there it goes. And uh, I'm going to hit that with a little accelerator too. Uh, don't worry if you get some accelerator on the, on the tissue, it dries very quickly. Now I'm also going to bring my trailing edges together and put a little glue uh, right about in there. I think that'll work out just, that's, that's even too much. So I want to Hit that with the accelerator. We're going to be gluing that to the top of the motor stick here next. So I'm going to take the motor stick, and the motor stick, uh, you'll see there's a, there's a notch right in there. This has a little extra wood. I'll have to clean that up. But uh, you, you just slide the clip right down over the motor stick into its position right there. I think you can see that. And, uh, you know, that little hole, that little notch in the uh, wing slides over a tab right in there. Hit this with a little glue, a little drop in there, maybe drop back there, maybe a little back there. Hit it with some accelerator, speed it up. And that's that part is done. You want to make sure that the wing is lying flush along the top of the, uh, of the motor stick and that you don't have uh, you know, any unusual gaps there. But that'll be, that'll be just fine. Next, I'm going to take the stabilizer and uh, position it over its tab right there at the at the uh, trailing edge or at the back end of the uh, of the uh, fuselage. Now, you know, I want to make sure when you when you do this, I think you can see it on the camera. You want to make sure that the stabilizer and the wing are uh, lined up because of the way the laser cuts the wood. It's possible that the uh, s that the edge of the motor stick has a bit of a, a tilt to it. Uh, there's no avoiding that, but you want to you want to line this up visually as best you can. So I have that. Uh, you know, parallel. It's, it's tough to call it parallel where the wing has a bend in it. But I have, uh, have that lined up pretty well. And here comes a little glue. I'm just going to put a little on to start with. Uh, I'm going to give that a little, give that a little bit of a accelerant. Okay, and that'll hold that in place while we uh, do a final adjustment on that. So I'm looking at this from the back one more time, make sure it's lined up, and then put a little glue. Uh, down in here. You want to make sure that the leading and trailing edges in particular have a little bit of glue. A little accelerator, make sure it's good. And that's done. Here comes the stabilizer. Uh, pardon me, the, uh, the rudder I guess it is, or the vertical stabilizer. Slides right over there and there's a, there is a tab, um, a, kind of a downward extension of the motor stick, the fuselage, that enables you to grip it. That's all that's there for. So you can hold that nice and straight while you put a little glue, a little on top, will be good. And uh, a little bit along that edge, make sure that there's some in there, and then you're done with that. Okay, so that's just about done. The one thing I, the one thing that we, remains is to attach the uh, propeller on the front and to hang the uh, rubber onto the plane. And I'm going to uh, pause the, pause the video for a moment while I get the uh, propeller ready to go. Okay, uh, what I want to do next is I want to take uh, a propeller and I want to balance it because if these, if the propeller isn't balanced, uh, you know, the, the plane will shake like a sewing machine and it doesn't fly uh, quite as smoothly as it would. And you see there's a heavy blade right there. And it's, that's the one that hangs down when you spin it. You don't have to spin it very fast to do this. Just watch it until the heavy blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of clear tape. I'm just going to tape it onto the 
other blade to make it just a little bit heavier. So here's my clear tape. Um, I do it, it doesn't have to be clear, I suppose, but uh, that seems to be best. I'm going to, that's actually too much. I'm going to tear off a little piece, maybe about like that, and attach it to the back side of that heavy, uh, pardon me, of the lighter blade, mash it down uh, pretty well. And what, you, what you're looking for is for the propeller to come to stop in no particular preferred position. Now, I, I just did it, and I need a little bit more tape. That wasn't quite enough. So let's take, uh, there's that piece that I used a second ago. Maybe I can tear a little bit more uh, from it. Okay. Now, traditionally, um, people balancing plastic blades do so by uh, sanding or scraping the plastic uh, on the heavy blade until it's lighter. Now, you're welcome to do that, but I find that to be uh, a little bit time consuming. And besides, a little bit of extra nose weight will never harm uh, this plane. It's always easy to, to fix if that's the case. Okay, there's another piece of tape on there, and uh, I think we're good. I'm going to go with that. You know, you could, you could work this all day long uh, and, uh, you know, get a little bit closer each time. So I think that's okay. This goes on the front, of course. Make sure it hangs downward, and that presses onto the nose of the plane. You want to get it uh, as far back into the slot as you can. Okay, that's good to go. You don't want it to be sticking out too far. Uh, then comes the, the rubber, and what I've done is I've, I've made a loop that's long enough um, that it will hang just about to the, uh, to the leading edge of the stabilizer. So I, I think I have that measured out. I can't remember what the number is, but that's, that's the way it goes. Can you, you can see that a little bit, a little bit easier if I back away. Okay, so that hangs down all the way to about the leading edge of the stabilizer. And as you wind it up, of course, that will snug up and then it'll hang on the hook. That's it. The uh, plane's ready to go. The one last step that I would uh, you know, encourage you to do is to look at your plane very critically in terms of alignment, especially the wings. You want to make sure that no wing has uh, you know, too much incidence or uh, possibly bent downwards. And, and this is the time to be very, very critical uh, of your work and of your final assembly. So if it doesn't look at all uh, perfect, now's the time. You can just kind of, you know, manhandle this into position. You can bend things. You can uh, maybe twist the leading edge as you need to. And uh, you can even go as far as cracking a spar. If you, if you feel that the only way out of uh, your misalignment is to crack something and reset it with glue, well, that's a good idea because uh, you, don't wanna, you don't want your first flight to be um, so awful that it just crashes into something. Okay, so I think this plane's ready to go, and um, I hope yours is too.